MPMA te technology, it, it's a technology that's able to diagnose the presence of HIV in a patient's blood at the point of care. In a normal, typical healthcare setting, you have a large um, laboratory technologies that are able to diagnose many um, lab samples at the same time. And what point of care technology in general, and, and MPMA in particular, is able to do is to bring that quality of um, technology down, the, down in, within the health system. So it can be used in a busy clinic, um, uh, it can be used in a remote setting, it can be used in settings where um, there isn't any trained lab uh, technologist because this MPMA can be used by um, any, tr any healthcare worker that um, has received training, not, not, not doesn't require you to have a specific lab qualification. It can also be used in settings where there's no air conditioning, where there isn't a whole lot of space, um, and also places where the electricity system might not be quite reliable. So it has a battery backup, both, both an internal UPS and also a battery drum that comes with the device. So the device is able to detect the presence of um, the HIV RNA um, uh, in, from a patient sample. And the new technology that we have, uh, that we're, we're speaking about, is able to measure the viral load, so measure the number of copies of the HIV virus within a, 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 a patient's blood sample. Um, and it, it can do that within 70 minutes. So what the, the key there is that um, as the patient is sitting with a healthcare provider, they're able to get a an actionable blood result. So the sample would be taken on the same day and the result given to the patient on the very same day. And a, a, any clinical decision that needs to be made to optimize the patient's treatment would be made at that time. What currently pertains is that um, a sample would be drawn from the, the patient and sent off to the central laboratory and um, the time period it would take for the result to get back to the patient and also for the patient and the healthcare worker and the result to all be back together again is variable. It could take days or weeks and those results um, don't always um, result in an optimal outcome for the patient. So you would ob obtain a sample and then um, separate the plasma and, and insert a small, very small amount of, of uh, plasma into a cassette. And then everything that is required to process the test is already vacuum sealed inside the cassette. Um, so there's no other interaction that the, the operator would do. They would just close the cassette and insert it into the machine. And then in 70 minutes, without any other additional actions, the, the result would be printed out for the, for the operator. So it's, it's, it's been worked out in a way that they, it doesn't require any connection to water, it doesn't require special air conditioning, it can be used at a wide range of temperatures, and it can also, it's also portable, so you can put it in a mobile vehicle and move it around from one site to another. So the, the, the word Pima is a Swahili name, which means test. So the original uh, technology that we had was a CD4, it still exists, it's a CD4 uh, device, a device that's able to give you a CD4 result um, within 20 minutes. And um, that, uh, when we were looking for a name for that technology, our uh, Tanzanian uh, collaborator was, uh, had suggested the, the name Pima. So that name has been very popular and um, at one stage, the company was even being referred to as Pima by people in, in the different African countries that we, we work in. And so um, when we developed this new molecular test, we then opted to, to go for a molecular Pima. We have two modules of the M-Pima. Um, one of them is able to detect the presence of the, the HIV. That is, we use that for early infant diagnosis. So. For an uh, in infant born to a mother who is HIV positive, we'd be able to detect whether the, the um, whether the infant is a is themselves HIV infected or not. Um, and then the the new modification that we are speaking about today is the viral load, where it can actually give you a specific number of copies that are present in the in the blood. Uh, the importance of that is around the management of HIV with the WHO guidelines that is saying that if a 
patient has repeated uh, uh, viral loads above a thousand, the, the, it indicates that there's treatment failure and that the patient would need to be changed, the treatment regimen of the patient would need to be changed. So that can only be done when, when, you, have re when you have the ability to test the, the vir for viral load and um, have the results back to the patient in a timeless manner. All African countries have committed to the UN AIDS 1990-90 uh, targets. And just to be specific, the third 90 um, is that 90% um, of people that are receiving antiretroviral therapy should uh, have dem demonstrable viral suppression. So the only way that you can demonstrate viral suppression is by measuring the viral load. And so um, the importance of a viral load is, is for the individual patient, it's the best measure of the efficacy of the antiretroviral treatment on, in that patient. But more importantly, if we have to end the transmission of HIV, we need to make sure that the treatment we are giving to everybody um, is rendering them to have, a un uh, to have a suppressed viral load, because people who have suppressed viral loads are less likely to transmit um, HIV to the next person, so both through sexual contact or from mother to child. So um, having the, the whole population of people receiving antiretroviral therapy being virally suppressed is critical to ending the transmission of HIV. And so um, for African countries who have committed to um, meeting the 1990-90 targets, having access to viral load testing for all people receiving antiretroviral therapy is critical.